This is the Brilliantly Branded Podcast, a safe place to have a voice and talk about branding and all the reasons that bring a brand to be brilliantly branded. I am your host, Maria Lucia Romero, a woman empowering other women, and I am welcoming you to this journey of learning and inspiration to build awareness around the world of business and the world of brands. This is the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. In our episode today, we have a life story that would leave you inspired and motivated. The story of an inspiring woman making a difference. We sat down with Kasia Bialik, the program coordinator and host at a prestigious media company here in Luxembourg. Kasia's journey is a demonstration of resilience and determination. She shares how she faced one of her most life's difficult challenges that is searching for a job as an expat in Luxembourg. So imagine having a two master degrees, fluency in four languages, a magnificent CV, and months goes without a single job offer. So what do you do when the possibility seems stacked against you? And guess what? She didn't wait for opportunity to knock on her door. She decides to open the door herself. She rolled up her sleeve, took a leap of faith, and did whatever it took to make ends meet. What she did end up doing will might surprise you. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and don't miss this episode where Kasia proves that sometimes have to do whatever it takes to keep going. It is a story of courage, resilience, and the strongest belief that no matter the circumstances, you can rise above them. So welcome one more time to the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. So welcome to the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. I have the honor today to have an amazing guest, and she is a true connector. She is a woman who's been making a big impact in the world of events, communications, and public speaking. So one thing that uh, took my attention and the reasons why I invite her is her involvement in different initiatives and her way to connect with other people. So please give a warm welcome to Cassia Bialik. She is the program coordinator and host at Luxembourg Prestigious Media. So Cassia, thank you very much for being here with us today. And I am going to ask you to please introduce yourself. Hello, Maria. Thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, me too. I'm honored to, to be your guest. Thank you very much. As you said, my name is Kasia. Uh, I come from Poland. I'm 20, 28 years old and I've been living in Luxembourg for almost three years. Before, I used to live in France. So uh, let's say that uh, now I've been living abroad for already uh, six years. And as you said, I, I work um, at uh, one of uh, one of the Luxembourgish media. And uh, in my free time, I also uh, I am also a teacher at Polish uh, Saturday Kindergarten, and I write articles for a platform for uh, Polish women abroad. Wow, that sounds uh, so excited. And uh, very nice. And part of the things is that you, I know your skills as a public speaker and event manager and um, doing all the things is actually very key in your career, have been, have been positioned yourself in your career. So could you tell us how all those skills have been helping you in your role right now? And especially in selecting, uh, because part of the things that you are doing is looking for speakers for all those events. So I'm curious about how are you managing that and what are those key things that you need to keep in mind in order to make that done? Yes, these skills are very important. But also, I'm, I think that uh, what really plays a big role in, in my job is also being curious, being a very curious person. Uh, being curious about uh, others' people, their uh, professional careers, and different kind of topics. Because every day I have to uh, learn something new. I read about investment funds, about finance in general in Luxembourg, 
about HR, about different kind of uh, areas of businesses to 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 dig inside in, into this or that topic to make a conference uh, as professional as as I can. Mm, so so this is one thing being curious and also about being um, being a public speaker. Mm, it's all about communication. So I always say that uh, effective communication is the key to success. So if you if you if you can communicate with people, if you can later make the communication effective, you can make a successful event. Yeah, you are completely right. And this is not a very easy uh, topic, <laughs> you know, when you when you talk about a communication and about actually internal communications in companies is is where everything starts, where everything is starting to really have the success of the things that you are managing. So how this internal communication is something that you are really managing very well. And part of the things is uh, that I saw that you like is you like these ambitious projects. So this say a lot about you and, and I would like to dig a little bit more on that and ask you if you want to, to share one of those particular challenges that you have been faced in your career in order to really stand out in all the processes that you are doing. How did you overcome it? I mean, having a challenge and overcome it. And what did you learn? I am an ambitious person. That's that's true. And I'm also a very curious person. Uh, and I hate to be bored. So that's why I, I like challenges. <laughs> that's why I, I choose uh, maybe not the best not the simplest way to 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 proceed in my life in general. I changed uh, countries twice, so Luxembourg is my third country in which I, I I I work and I live. But all the all the as you call them ambitious projects are uh, are a big part of my life in general. I like big projects because, and I, in general, I like working on projects because they have their beginning and their end. So I like doing big things many times. And that's why I really like my job because we make a lot, an enormous amount of, of events per year. They are business events. They are roundtables, but they change all the time. Every week, every month we have a different project to, to deal with. Every, month I have to speak with different people, dig into different kind of topics. And this is something that I really like because I like the, the, the very fast pace of working. And here maybe I will surprise you a little bit because uh, I <laughs> I wouldn't tell you that my biggest challenge was an or, was an, an organization of a, a big event or uh, interviewing, I don't know, Xavier Bettel. Uh, the biggest challenge in my career was um, a situation in my life that I had to face one year ago when I couldn't find a job in Luxembourg. Uh, that's, wow, wow. Uh, this is a big topic. <laughs> it is. It is. I can speak French. I can speak English. Many people think that without French, you can't find a good job in Luxembourg, which is not always the case. Uh, mm. But I was struggling in, uh, to, 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 find, to find a job for two, three months. And unfortunately, I was, uh, I was cheated by my ex-employer uh, and I didn't have any unemployment benefits. I didn't have money. Oh, wow. I didn't that have That is anything. challenging. Exactly. That was the biggest challenge in my life, but I couldn't okay. give up. So uh, I have two master's degrees. One uh, that I obtained in uh, Poland and another one that I that I got in France, and I had to uh, go to other people, other people, people's houses and clean their apartments, their houses. So I became a cleaning lady wow. for this uh, these two three months. I was also a nanny and I was giving classes online just to earn some money to start over. And the lesson uh, wow. that I learned from this uh, from from this big challenge was just Kasha, be patient, because uh, better time better time can can come and uh, and and you can and you can face it. And I managed it. 
and it was a very hard. That's, that was the biggest challenge in my life. I've never felt so bad in my life, so hopeless. But I later found my my my, my job. Wow, Kasha, this is something that uh, gave me this gas pump. <laughs> you know, it's something like uh, I'm feeling very um, identified and very proud of you because doing what you did, having two master degrees, uh, speaking many languages and having the capacity to just add value to a company and many companies that we are surrounded and people don't have the capacity to see that and, and wanted to find a talent and the talent is there and the talent is actually doing different things to really to try to show their value, to to, to find the, the, the money to live. So this is uh, something that made me feel so proud about you. I want to congratulate you in public, you. Kasia, because this is something that actually uh, any job, any job that you decide to do is a, a, a very uh, good thing to give value to yourself. And that doesn't mean that you are going to, I mean, that doesn't define you. And actually having a, a job today and doing the things that you like to do or doing the, the things that you have to do, it is something that is talking a lot about you, a lot about how you take the challenges. Even if you need to go and clean houses, this is something that you are ready for, for, for do. So this have a lot of value. I think it's a very inspirational because we probably are thinking how I'm going to do that if I have two master degrees, all these languages, all this background, but actually is knowing our, our, our value, knowing how we are worthy of having a good life and having all the all the necessities of our life covered. So uh, congratulations, Kasha. I think that this is a big thing. And yeah, you surprised me. <laughs> I, I was not it. expecting that. And I am so happy that you are telling this story because I think that you are going to be inspiration for many people that are listening to our podcast. That yeah. was that was my aim uh, because we we always speak about how life can be beautiful and how how is it, it and it's always nice to say to speak well about your achievements about your career and what was the, your biggest challenge and to boast about that yeah. but we really forget about this bad side uh, of life that everybody faces every day especially when you're yeah. an uh, immigrant which is not uh, the the simplest thing in the world yeah, that's true. I, I have been a road for many years already as well. So I know what are you talking about exactly and how you face those challenges when you arrive new into a country and how actually bringing a little bit how you manage your personal brand, bringing all this knowledge and putting it out to the world and say, look, look all the things that I know to do. Look what I can add value and how can I do that? And I don't know what, sometimes it's like a transparent and I have been there too. And this is uh, actually the reason reasons why I am connecting this with uh, my my why, the reason why I'm doing all these things, doing a, a place, a safe place, because the Brilliantly Branded Podcast is a safe place to talk about whatever you want to talk, and especially all these things. And I know that is a big topic, the terms of employment here in Luxembourg. So this is, this is something that I'm happy that you share, because I know your journey. I know your international background. I have been researched about uh, your international background. And of course, we are always showing the best part, you know, the success, but probably never saying, okay, but to, to be here. And this is the, the tip of the iceberg. I have been passing all the things, but coming to that specifically, what are the big lessons that you learned after that? I think uh, the biggest lesson was to be patient because in uh, somebody else's eyes, um, not having a job for two, three months can be normal. Mm, maybe in Luxembourg, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a normal thing not to have a job for three, four, five, uh, six months. 
But for me, it was a disaster. I am a very hardworking person and I have never had any problem to find any job as a freelancer or a house half time time job or a full time job i I've been always working during my whole studies, and that was something very very mm, I don't even know how to explain that that was very very sad for me, so the big lesson is to be patient because good time can can come and will for everybody yeah, thank you for sharing that i think is is um something very nice for me in this moment especially because you know it's sometimes the things are not coming when you want uh but the things are coming when you need <laughs> so be That's patient true. is something that yeah. that really define you and actually this is like uh, uh proving our our uh, um, way to do the things our way is proving our character you know it's proving how strong we are or how patient we are or how we are taking different situations even uh not always obtaining what that um, bring with with the situation so exactly yeah i i saw um part of the other things that you have been doing kasha is uh you have been working in many different projects uh as a freelancer as well that uh, we were talking about that and part of the of the things that uh sounds uh interesting for me is how you have been managing different pro uh, projects uh as a freelancer and how you really change your heart um ma managing each each of those projects and using the engagement and the storytelling that actually is part of the of the skills that you have to really make that work As a freelancer, you work on projects. So you declare that you will finish a project uh, by this or that time. And as I mentioned before, I love projects. And as in the storytelling, everything has its beginning and its end. So if I can, if, if I can uh, have an input, I create my big project from A to Z and I am responsible for for it so so many projects at the same time um i mentioned also that uh, while studying i was working so during this uh, six years of uh, of the university I, uh, i i was also working because uh, i didn't have uh, i wanted to develop myself i wanted to fill my cv as much as i can And my parents weren't able to help me financially to, um, to, to, to finish my studies. So that's all about being curious again and using different skills and trying to get on the, um, on the work market in the, in the way that I wanted. So for example, the, the, one of the most interesting, uh, projects that I was responsible of was, um, translating texts from Polish into French about airsoft. You know what airsoft is? No, no idea. They are, <laughs> they are guns, big plastic guns. They are replicas of guns um, with, um, with, the, with the plastic balls inside. So they are quite safe. Sometimes if somebody shoots you, uh, you can have a small bruise, but it's, it, it's a safe sport. And it's a big culture around that. So that was something completely uh, out of my mind. I did it twice of more in my life because I was a scout. But when I saw an offer, I thought to myself, wow, that's so nice that I would like to, I would like to discover this topic because I've tried it once or twice or twice in my life. So why not? So I wrote them and here it comes the storytelling because I used the facts about uh, doing this, uh, this sport before, even if it was only twice in my life. But, um, but I explained it that, listen, I was a scout. I like going to the forest. I was shooting. I like shooting. They, I like guns. Why not to, why not helping you? So they accepted me. I, uh, I did a big project for them. Uh, I also, ho I've also hosted, uh, 10 uh, commercial videos about, uh, these guns. So having, let's say, no idea about what I'm talking about. I had to discover the topic. <laughs> I had to dig inside. 
uh, read a lot of stuff about this. I even went to my to my friend too because he's he's a fan of uh, airsoft. He explained me everything. He showed me the gun. He showed me how to open it, and so how to use it, and so on and so on. And later uh, in the videos, I I am I am an actress. I am a host, and I made everybody understand that I know how to use it, and I just made a made a promotion of uh, of these guns. So that was a very interesting uh, topic, a very interesting vocabulary that I that I had no idea about before, even in Polish. And later, we we, we are talking about about translation uh, translating it into French. So that was a big, nice, uh, nice project. So that means that uh, you took the ownership of the project and you decide to communicate this in a different way and very original way where you have to show by yourself how that worked, showing, showing the things how it was working by doing and, and that was the project. Well, that, that is beautiful. That is, that is beautiful because uh, that, that speaks a lot about you, about uh, the way that you are taking the projects and taking the ownership and actually uh is a lot of uh, leadership there uh, included if uh, if if i can say that because someone that do a project or do a work is doing i mean you can just limit it to do the translation and that's it but you put something else you added more value And uh, my question uh, there, I'm basing on that story that you, that you tell that it, I found uh, very interesting, is how do you think that the people take the fact that you give more than what they are expected? The reactions can be different. It uh, really depends on people. Uh, in my experience, I, I met people who appreciated the fact that um, I am a person who comes out with a lot of initiative. But I also have some experience where this initiative is not really appreciated because some companies are, um, are based off, um, hierarchy and you can't really jump out of uh, one position into another one by, by pro proposing different kind of different solutions. So it really depends. It really depends on, on the person you are talking to, maybe also about the culture, but in general, people appreciate that. And they can see that we can do more and more together. So if you ask me to, to give you one solution to, to a problem, I can, I can, I can give you uh, three or four um, answers to, 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 to your problem. And I like it. And I like it because it's also being very flexible. And I learn a lot like this. Because if you get into a dialogue, you can explain me as a, as a professional in this or this um, um, field. Uh, yeah, that's that's nice that uh, that could work or that that can't work because this and A, B, C and D. So I am really open minded. I'm open to, to the to the dialogue and I learn a lot from different people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, it's how you take the best of each of those projects, learning about them, giving the value without just saying no do you know this is this is not my responsibility that is part of the things that happen and part of the things that i i i connected with why some companies probably said do you know we need to hire someone that do this but this person if we put additional uh, work are going to say do you know this is not my responsibility so having this attitude that you have uh is something that Um, I consider very important, especially when you are working in different cultures, sometimes give that message out and say, do you know, I'm able to help, I'm able to add value to the, to your company. It's things that the people, I'm happy that the people are realizing, you know, because then when you have opportunity to, to work in the professional, um, and your professional career and showing all the things that you are capable of doing, it is something that really uh, positioned you as well in the sector that you are especially working right now, um, doing the interview to all these very important people, <laughs> you know, because I'm connecting how how all the story that you have been passing and the things that you have been living uh to now all the environment that you are managing all those events be the the person that is the public speaker that is presenting the events and all the things is uh, really something to be used as an inspiration just to wrap up 
this uh, fantastic conversation. There is something that you want to say to our community to add value, as you well know how to do that, and to inspire and make probably people think? I think that even if, if you don't stop believing in yourself, for example, in looking for a job, that uh, you always fi- face uh, rejections, uh, never give up. Especially if you're an immigrant, never give up, give up, believe in yourself, read, uh, go on LinkedIn, get inspired and do your best. And just remember that you only live once and nobody else can uh, live your yeah. life instead of you. Wow, I, I love that. And just uh, as a matter of curiosity, how you end up uh, finding your job? If may I ask? <laughs> Thanks to LinkedIn. Thanks to LinkedIn and building oh, wow. uh, building my, my my network on LinkedIn because uh, while looking for a job, I started writing many different posts. I I I, I tried to, um, to 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 catch uh, people's attention. I try I tried different kind of uh, techniques in writing posts. Um, I was looking for uh, amazing graphics. Uh, and, and and I tried to 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 show my my narrative skills and my writing skills. And uh, under one post, uh, one person commented that, "Oh, look, I know three people, and maybe they will have a job for you. What do you think?" And one person that was mentioned uh, in this comment uh, wrote me on LinkedIn, and that's how I got my my dream job that where I where I work now. Oh, wow. That will answer the question that I did before. (laughs) So it's a lovely experience, actually, because uh, it's true. You need to be very active on uh, building your network, independent if it is uh, across a social media channel or if it's uh, in-person events or these kind of things. That is part of the things that I recommended always to my coaches. That is part of my process doing coaching right now. And uh, uh, I love that you share that with us because it's something that uh, people can learn about how to really start connecting and not just applying randomly to the positions mm-hmm. that probably, you know, the probabilities that your CV getting uh, revised is uh, quite um, uh, far. <laughs> So, well, uh, Kasha, thank you very much for all uh, this beautiful experience that you share with us. I am so happy to having you as my guest. I think that many of the things of your life story uh, will inspire and will give this power that we need to have, um, that we know that we have as a women in general and a part of this uh, purpose that I have to show ourselves in the best way possible. So thank you very much. Uh, Kasha, and uh, well, you want to add something? You want to say something else? Maria, thank you very much for your invitation. And I really appreciate that I could be your guest. And I really respect what you are doing and keep going. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you have been inspired by this content and join us for future episodes of the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. We will continue exploring the power of branding and the stories behind successful brands. And remember, if you know a woman who has built a successful brand with a unique approach and a story to share, please refer them to our podcast. We will love to learn from their experiences and share their story with our listeners. Stay tuned for more episodes of Brilliantly Branded and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, on our YouTube channel for more branding insights and women empowerment. Until the next episode, ciao, ciao.